So tell about Alexis and writing in the, uh, the oh vector. my god, the vector, the vector, the vector oh, WA. I'll tell yeah. you about that. Page sure, 12. she just turned 16 years old, and I'm taking my vector. I had a house in Vegas at the time from LA to Las Vegas. I said, Lexi, come with me. Yeah, sure. So we're cruising. The minute we cross the California Nevada uh, line, I let her jump in the, in the seat and just drive, drive this thing. Very fast car. In those days, it was the fastest road car ever made. 227 miles an hour top end, 750 horsepower twin tow board. So she took, she jumped in there. Wide the, open, two lane road, you know. Very easy ride. And then she got on it and got on it and got on it. Pretty soon I realized we're going about 200 miles an hour. You told me. I to said pass you could. I did. I, did. <laughs> I said you could. You could pass, pass it. them. It's all did. good. It's she all went, open and Whoa. clear. You know, she get on it. I was like, are you sure? Yeah, okay. And then I realized what 200 fun. miles an hour was like. Okay. <laughs> she was fine with it. She was in a race. I made her slow down. It was because of that car. speed, you have to see one mile ahead of you. You know, it just wow. So it was. It was pretty. Uh, we said pretty gnarly, but she drove it great. I think right. that's where I got my racing bug from. Possibly. Definitely my father and his enthusiasm for sports cars. What do you think really got you into racing in, in the first place? I kind of was a wild child from the beginning. I've always loved to do kind of wild and crazy stuff. <laughs> um, but my dad used to race cannonball races here and there just for fun. But I mean, it sounded like an amazing, fun thing to do. And so I, in high school, I just kind of gravitated towards you know, the guys that were driving hot rods and working on them and going to the swap meets and getting parts for cars. And I, I got a 67 Chevelle when I was 17 and I still have it. So um, went from kind of street racing to really loving it so much and doing so good at it, having a real passion that I wanted to do it for real. Um, went to a drag race when I was actually 16 at uh, the, the, Auto Club Nationals in Pomona, and I just fell in love with the nitro cars. And from that moment, I was like, at some point in my life, I will be driving that car <laughs> one day. How difficult a decision was it for you to decide to retire? It, it, was, it was difficult for sure. Um, my ultimate goal was to win a championship, be the first woman, female, in nitro funny car to win a championship. She means the overall championship for the whole. Yeah. Sure, right. Um, but I, I definitely would have had to invest probably another five years and I've got teenage girls at home and I've been gone for the last 12 years, mostly like 24 uh, weeks out of the year or weekends. So, um, it's, it takes a toll on your family life and sooner or later your work and your home is going to suffer in some way or another. I was spreading myself so thin trying to balance everything and, and I did it for a long time and I did really good. Um, but I only got a couple years left with my kids at home. So, you know, it was my, my, uh, responsibility. I brought them into this world. So, you know, I, I want to make sure that, that they have the best, you know, experience and the best chance. So what conversations, if any, were the two of you having as you were going through that decision-making process? Just I agreed with her. Everything she said yeah. was correct. But the only thing she didn't tell you is how she got into her first car. She missed that one, so I'm going to tell you, okay? I got in my first car. Yeah, I'm going to tell them, okay? And if okay. I'm wrong, you tell me, okay? Okay. So I don't ever give my biological kids new cars. My own oh, personal biological kids all get used cars, right? <laughs> Alexis, it's your first car. You're turning 16. You have to get a car at least three <laughs> so years funny. old, period, okay? Calls me up and he says, oh, Dad, there's this new thing out. It's like a, it's like a van, but they call it now an SUV. So figure a van with windows, right? I go, oh, my God, her first car is like a van with windows, right? So Yeah, proud. that was the criteria. It had to be used. It had, had to be, be big. Used. It had, had to be big you and know, safe, safe, right? I mean, maybe a 55 Oldsmobile, something Fairly really safe. safe. So anyway, so we go down to Orange County to pick this thing up. I'm so excited. We rent this car. It's called the Typhoon, right? GMC and Typhoon. GMC Typhoon. Mm -hmm. yeah, Typhoon, right? I'm so excited. So she's following me back home. So I get on the phone with Clint Eastwood. And I say, Clint, Alexis is behind me. By the way, my phone was that big in those days, okay? Alexis is behind me here. She got her first car, Clint. I'm so excited. She got this new thing. It's like a van, but now they have windows in it. It's called an SUV, right? <laughs> he says, Alexis. I said, yeah. He goes, JP, what did she get? 
I said, it's called the typhoon. He goes, oh no, she suckered you. I said, what are you talking about? He says, JP, I had one. I just got rid of it six months ago because you turn a corner, you almost go over. It's a hot rod, JP. That's, that's got a giant engine far bigger than it should ever have. And that's what she got. She got the typhoon. And Clinton just sold his priories. They're just too, too dangerous. You know, interesting. Yeah, it was pretty fast. And well, she got so. me. Tell about pitching your dad for Patron to sponsor your team. Um, well, he actually we we had this discussion because he knew that I was kind of street racing and doing all that, and he said, you know, I know you really love cars, and if you want to do it for real, he goes, why don't you get into racing? You know, and uh, I wasn't quite sure at that time what kind of racing I wanted to do, whether it was uh, you know road course or drag racing or what. But um, after going to the drag race, I knew at that point that's what I really wanted to do. So I went to Frank Holly's drag racing school. And he's like, yeah, hey, you know, go try it out. See if you even like it, you know, see if you can get licensed. I went, got licensed, came back, said, that's awesome. I love it. I took my savings and I found like an old used super gas Corvette. Uh, it was kind of on its last leg, but still it got my, got my feet wet. <laughs> and um, at the time, Patron was already involved in um, NASCAR and uh, IndyCar. So it kind of seemed like the natural step. And he's like, hey, you know, we're already in racing. You know, we'll, we'll sponsor you if, you know, if this is something you really but want to you do. But you got to give me a presentation. Exactly. So That's I put what together about, I the whole packet of everything and what our goals were and, um, you know, that eventually I want to go to Nitro Funny Car. Well, what do you think the <laughs> likelihood is you race again? Um, maybe when the girls are out of, out of the house and back in, you know, in college or something like that, I might, um, or I might just do some fun countdown races or maybe race indie. I don't know. It's hard to find a team that will, uh, come together for just a couple races. You know right. what I mean? So it, it just all depends on what's out there and, and really what I'm willing to sacrifice at home to do that again. But as far as a full-time schedule, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, your husband, Jesse James. So you guys were friends before? Oh, yeah. I've okay. known Jesse for 20 years. Okay. I knew him back when he was in Long Beach. Yeah, actually, he introduced us. Yeah. So how did that come about? <laughs> Jesse called me one day, six years ago, something like that, about. Yeah. And said, JP, yeah. you know, because uh, his son's about my, son, my son's age. He says, why don't we have a father-son hangout this week? And I said, I'd love to, Jesse, but I'm up here in Dallas racing with my daughter, Alexis. She's into, you know, funny cars. He said, guy used to sponsor one of those. Why don't I bring my son on up there? And I said, sure, bring him on up. We'll hang out together, right? And then the two of them met for the first time. Two days later, Jesse calls me and says, JP, I'm still up here. What are you doing still up here, Jesse? He goes, well... I want your permission. He's very, he's a real gentleman. Well, not he's two a, days later, Dad. Wait, <laughs> it wasn't that quickly. Well, it was pretty quick. It was, it was, <laughs> two days me, later, can I marry your No, 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 not married. The first time oh. he said, I'd like, his, gentleman said, I'd like permission to take your daughter out to ask her out. I said, well, Jesse, oh, you know, you're, I didn't yeah. Know that. yeah. Oh, yeah, he wow. called me from the That's racetrack. Cool. He said, I've been up here for two days now. I'd like to take your daughter. I'd like your permission. I said, Jared, Gar we don't have to ask my permission. You're both adults, but of course, wonderful. And then as time went on, Many months went by, and he calls me on the phone and says, JP, I want to have breakfast with you. I go, yeah, Jesse, come on over. He doesn't live far from here. Came on over, we had breakfast, and he said to me, uh, I want to ask your permission to marry your daughter. I said, what? I said, Jesse, you've only known each other for six, eight months, whatever. He said, no, and he said, but we know. He says, you know me, JP. And he says, and I want you to know that, and I know this, and you know it. I'm a good dad, because he raises kids. A lot of people don't know that he raises his own kids. He says, your granddaughter needs a dad, and you know I'm a damn good dad. I said, yeah, Jesse, you are. He goes, I'd like to ask permission to marry your daughter. Oh, it was a great wedding. We had Jesse, we had business people, Hell's Angels people, we had everything at <laughs> our wedding. Your wedding was a combination of everything. It was incredible. We have a good. lot of uh, a lot of similarities. A lot of a lot, a lot of, of cool same people, different walks of like, life. Yeah. Uh, let's end on this. Uh, what do you think you've most learned from your dad over the years? Perseverance, um, believing in yourself, not giving up on anything, um, patience. Uh, the way he is with his grandchildren um, is so inspiring and you know he's gone through hell and high water to get to where he is right now and that's it's so inspiring I mean who couldn't be inspired by that story um, and he's such a, a kind wonderful person you know some people may be may have turned bitter or changed once they became successful and my dad's never changed.